Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here on this Friday morning. Got a great show lined up, a good fish report, all kind of good information. But let's get started on weather. Brought to us by Haney Technical Center there at the corner of Baldwin, Highway 77. High day 69, low 60s. So we're not getting out of the 60s. Water temperatures has uh, gone up another degree. It's at 59.4. And we always, you know, it's a little bit early. We always look at that 60 degrees, just break that 60. Then when we get 60, we think about that 66 and 68 because we all know what that means because the Spanish mackerel are going to start. And we're, we're about four, five, six weeks away from that. But anyway, We'll, uh, we'll get started on uh, and, and keep enjoying the fishing and hunting while we can. No present, no time like the present, my dad always said. All right, and the river reading is brought to us by Sand Hill Seafood. Good folks up there. Good weekend to go up there and get, some, get a good fresh seafood platter. And we'll be giving one of those away in a few minutes. All right, the Appalachian called a Blunstown right at eight foot. But folks, if you look at it, it's, it's, going, to be, it's going to be going up now. The, uh, it's not going up a lot, but it's going to start rising. Been a lot of rain and all. And throughout the southeastern areas. So I don't know if you know, a lot of those fronts stay north of us, but they've had a lot of rain. Now, the Choctahatch at, at, uh, over here at Caraville, it's at a 6.2, and it's going straight up. I mean, it, look at it. It's going way up there, going up there fast. It's going to plateau out. It's going to get up there close to, to 10 foot. So both rivers will be rising. We, you know, yesterday we said we're not quite sure how much is going to be rising. It'll be rising pretty fast at those two places, so uh, be aware of that. Tide chart brought to us by Ken Forrest Long. We're looking at a low tide at 251 this morning and a high tide at 420. Excellent situation, but we have the wind coming in from the east-southeast, which is a little, you know, we don't get that a whole lot, but east-southeast pretty strong, okay? So be, uh, you know, again, know where you are and that, on a big lake and all. We've got that east wind, which is not a you know, prevailing wind this time of year, but we'll have it. And the fishing game time brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers and Port St. Joe, 708 to 908. And then we're looking at 731 to 931 tonight. Now, during the break, I'm going to call Sea Quarters Marina. We'll start off with a good fishing report from those folks. So we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back, folks. And we're going to see if we get Sea Quarters on the line here. Uh, we want to get a good fishing. I talked to him last week or good two. Good morning, Sea Quarters. Okay, Kim, we got you on air now. Captain Kim, how's everything going down your way? Oh, we're doing great, Mr. Chester. Thank you so much. Uh, it's a beautiful day down here in Carabelle, and I've already gotten a couple boats filled up, ready to go up the river with a good, good catch of wor earthworms, and uh, they're ready to go catch some decent-sized brim and bass. They're doing real good with the redfish and trout up here, too. Well, that's good to hear. That's always a pretty place and all. I know I haven't talked to you in about two weeks, so the last couple of weeks, uh, what all has been going on down there? It's been a little bit breezy for too far offshore, uh, of course, with the last couple of weeks' weather. Um, they've been staying in pretty close with hitting the uh, sea bass. Basically, is what uh, most of them are doing right now. We're all waiting for the trigger fish to open back up on the 1st of March, so that ought to be a good deal. Yeah, that's right around the corner. So what are, what are those guys down there and, and the ladies, while they're doing, they're concentrating on going up the Carabelle River, right? That's been the most popular with it been being as breezy as it has been in the last couple of weeks. Now it's starting to calm down a little bit. I think uh, they should be able to get out there again and start to going for some snapper, maybe uh, uh, kingfish, anything that's uh, biting out there, it'll be a good try. Kim, how far up the river do they need to go before they start catching some of those fish, the redfish and all? And you know they they're going up uh, in the, the river. The, the redfish and trout are right here by the office, really, and <laughs> just on the outside of the river, mm -hmm. uh, mouth of the river, and then upwards they don't have to go real far. We got a nice couple of bayous right up uh, towards the bridge. Okay, so and they've been standing fairly close. Now they go way up there, you know, they'll go and put in up 67 and what have you just to get some good sized brim also. That's awesome. You go so you, on your boat. You can put it. You can do the slam just about it with trout, redfish, and brim. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Listen. What are they catching redfish and, tr and trout on down there right this time of year? Mostly on the spoons. That's been really popular. The gulps have been popular, and then of course always the mirror lures. Mirror lures are uh, no fail. Okay. Well, that that sounds good. And as soon as I get a chance, I'm gonna head down y'all's way. 
Sounds good. We look forward to seeing you. All right, Captain Kim. Good talking to you. You too. Happy fishing. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. All right, always love to get a report down there, folks. That's a special place down in, as you further down south you go, around the coastline, all the way through the Big Bend, on through Stenhatchin area. That, that is the last of the real Florida. I urge you to go, if you don't go fishing, just drive down there sometimes, spend some time. Really, really unique places. I got a couple of pictures here. Let's start off with this one right here. This is, okay, these are Pompano jigs. Our buddy Mark Stafford sent these to me. Now, these are homemade, and I want you to look at them close. He wants to sell all of them, and uh, pompano season is not too far off now, I'm telling you. And you look at these, and, and you can buy, see the heads right here? These all, he's, he uh, made these himself. He's got a bunch of them for sale. Now, you're going to have to add a tail to them, uh, some kind of threading. Or i tell you what I do. I was looking at these last night. I, 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 bet, I think I would actually put some uh, fish bites on them. I don't even worry about putting a tail on them because they got a color right there. And then you had a smell. I think I'd take them just like that. But anyway, he wants to sell these. So uh, get a hold of Mark Stafford over there in Callaway. I guarantee you, you can get a good buy on those uh, compared to what you have to pay for them retail. So wanted, he wanted me to show this on, on TV. All right, here we go. A couple more pictures real. Let's look at this uh, Rachel Camille. Uh, Rachel Hallman was her maiden name. She's been on the show before. Works for U.S. Fish and Wildlife up in Georgia. And she and her husband went down, <laughs> went down to, you, you can go to Bahamas and swim with the sharks, and she loves outdoors like this. And she actually, uh, they took a picture of her swimming with the sharks. Now, that don't look very inviting to me, but I tell you what, that's a great picture, Rachel. And when you come back in town to visit folks, we want you to come on the show. Look at our buddy Ken Paramore, number three last week. <laughs> Ken, that's a good job, a good one. I so said, you're having a great year. That's his third buck this year, and a nice, another nice set of horns. And uh, real proud of you, Ken. Good hunting right there. One of my former students, Nicole Fisher, and she's fishing with her dad at Lake Seminole. And she said, another fine afternoon on the water with my dad. And that is just special, Nicole. Nicole Fisher, always smiling, a good little fishing lady. Jared Barnett with his girlfriend, Megan Wilkerson, he finally, after two years, finally broke my Florida deer curse uh, the other afternoon. Good job, Jarrett Barnett. Okay, and that takes care, that takes care of uh, some pictures and all. One or two, uh, I want to talk about the rut real quick. Uh, we're taking, let's go ahead and uh, get ready for a break, and I'll come back and talk about that. But let's go ahead and draw for our Sand Hill Seafood Seafood Platter, okay? And that is really good. I, I, every time somebody goes to the one, they'll call them back or email them and tell them how much they enjoyed it. And the first winner this morning is going to be, I'm going to pull it out from the bottom. And that winner is going to be from Highland Park, David Gilmore. All right, let's take a break and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Just as soon as this show is over, we're headed down to Franklin County High School, and middle school. We're going to be talking to some of the students down there, giving them a motivational speech. Really looking forward to seeing you also. Y'all make sure you get all your work done before I get there because we want to have a good time once I get there. We just have a little talking and party and all kind of stuff. So, uh, and uh, y'all bring me some oysters too if you got any. All right, let's, uh, let's look at this. Uh, we're talking about the, the rut and all. I'm, I'm going to draw on this and then you're going to see it on the screen. And we're talking about tree blind placement. I'm talking about these portable blinds and all, which I tend to hunt with a lot lately over the past three or four years. But anyway, I want to draw this out for you. So this is Say so this is uh, your hunting territory right here. I've got a little 40 acre piece and some land close to it and say this is north, okay, and this is south. So now, uh, what I want you to be aware of, uh, you always look for the little scrapes and all, okay, so what, uh, so I've got, you know, boom, 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 a couple little scrapes here, a couple little scrapes here, say whatever, and then, yeah, and basically, I'm gonna simplify this. These are the scrapes where the deer, that's a scrape line, okay, and now, uh, my prevailing wind is a north wind. So I have my blind, okay? My blind is about right in here, okay? Well, the other day we had the, I, I was there and we had a wind. The wind came and it's, it's doing that, you know, something came in out of the southwest, okay? So you see now, and why, and I'd have this, but my, Okay, you want to have a stand on both sides to scrape, and that's the reason for doing that. And I say that because, like I say, and the reason I wasn't able to go to that one the other day, I knew when going in, I knew where the wind was coming from, 
but I was not able to get to that other place because uh, my, my north blind is not in working order. And it's all my fault. But anyway, uh, and I, I didn't see anything. The, day, the, the time before I went there, that's when I saw the big buck and all. I just didn't uh, I pass it up. Anyway, what's going on now? If you look at this and there, I'll try to pick out a different color. Oh, these are some neat colors, don't they? I just get carried away. Okay, let's go to this color here. And what they'll do, they'll come up here, and I've seen them do it. They'll, they'll check that, and you know, they'll come back around, and they'll check this one, and, and then, and then, but they'll keep moving a lot of time. But now, and, and uh, then they'll sort of go right back, and they just go back and forth checking that scrape. Then they're going to go down here to their bedding area where their safe refuge area, and, and uh, stay there. And on, they're going to come over there at different times. Uh, it, it's, you know, what the moon's doing, what the wind's doing, what the rain is doing. And ironically, uh, uh, I, like, I like to go right before the rain because that means you've got a front coming in. And also, not just the front coming in, uh, as you leave there, that rain's going to be washing out what scent you do leave. So, so anyway, I just want to pass that on to you. And I, I, I'm sitting in the sand, and uh, always, it's always good just sit there and relax and think about all kind of good things. And I, was, I got tickled thinking about our technology for, for outdoorsmen today. We talk about that a lot on here, fishing and hunting. And what was cool, I knew the rain was coming, but I was able, you know, now, now we're able to check it on radar. And you can sort of time it, of course. You know, it comes at different speeds and all, but the other day, uh, well, this was, I think, Wednesday, a couple, two days ago. Uh, I saw it coming, and I knew I had so much time and how far I had to go to get back to the truck. And I, I mean, I, I timed it. I was real proud of myself. I, I, when I got back to the truck, the rain was coming, and I was able to stay almost to the last minute. And then in, in the earlier years before radar, you see those dark clouds coming in. don't necessarily mean, you know, uh, it's going to be that right then, because I saw the dark clouds ahead of time, so I was able to, uh, to milk it as long as I could, because I, I was trusting my technology and all. So, so anyway... So uh, speaking of, of uh, horns and everything, I want to, we always talk about size and, you know, give these numbers and all. Back in the day, we just said, that's a nice eight point. Man, you so-and-so got a 10 point and all that. Well, basically over the years, uh, the basically started a Boone and Crockett Club. They actually started measuring, measuring and getting uh, numbers. And they just add the inches while they're doing that. I, I know back when I was doing the outdoor ed, uh, Stan Kirkland was so good about coming up to my class uh, as a guest speaker uh, every year or so, and he'd go over all kinds of things. One of the things he always went over was scoring, how to score. And he was a certified scorer, and you got to get certified. He just came come out of there with a tape measure and all that. But I just want to basically sort of show you what, what he would do and what the certified scorers would do. And basically what they'll do, they'll take a little time. I'm not going to try to do it here. I'm just going to show you what they'll do. First of all, measure, okay, the, the beam, okay. They'll measure that. They do both of those, and they start. They add all these inches together. All right, then, then they'll actually take the distance between the tips, and they'll actually measure that. Okay, and then they'll start doing on the tines. They'll measure, and this is a Florida book. That, that's a nice Florida book. You know, it's not going to be Boone and Crockett and all, but it's a nice Florida book. We'll talk about it later. Then they're going to measure the tines. Okay, and to get that measurement, each one of them. All right. Then they'll also. Uh, the brow tines and all, all that stuff is measured, and what they, they come up with those numbers, and that's how they get. Uh, that's how they get it. It's a very, they don't do it that fast. I've watched Stan do it. He brought brought some to a school, and he would. It takes a good while to get it exactly, and then you can also get a circumference. You had a circumference of the of the base right here, so and, and that's why you see why you have to be certified to do that. But I just wanted to go over this with you. And, and so you'd understand when we give these numbers and all, when Paul Winterman was here yesterday, you know, he was talking about one, he passed up all those 150s because he was chasing a 200 in, in outdoorsman vernacular. Uh, the Florida State record, and we talk about that all the time, is 168 points uh, taken in 1977 by my cousin Larry Furr. And we got his interview, and uh, he's very reclusive, and I'm I the only one that ever interviewed him on that. So, and I can't find it, so I'm going to go back up there and interview him again so you can see that. And that record will never be legally broken. And because of all of the, we have all the input of all these deer that's been behind fences and all, and some of them have gotten out. So you have the genetics are sort of uh, skewed by now. So it's hard to get to, to see what, you know, behind fence, all throughout the panhandle, there's some fenced in areas. And they raise them uh, and, and they, they do a good job and, and people come in and hunt those. But those scores are 180s, 190s, huge numbers. But 
you know, the FWC will not recognize that as a wild taken buck. So I just wanted to pass that on to you so you'll, you'll understand that, that right there. And not much technology, but I said Boone and Crockett Club actually started doing that on elk and moose and of course went on down to the, to the deer and all that. So uh, yeah, again, outdoorsmen just sort of doing things for different people, making it better. All right, we're gonna get ready to do our fishing report, but uh, let's get our drawing for Tarpon Dock Seafood. All right, the winner of the $20 gift certificate is going to be, is going to be from Panama City Beach, Sheila Evans. Congratulations, Sheila. Oh, you know what? I was supposed to add some more names. Did I add those names, Jeff? Let me see. I gotta add some more names. Hold on. I feel bad now. Greg Frady from Alford. We'll add your name in here. You still got a chance. And Ron Mills. Ron got a nice book the other day. I gotta show that book that Ron got. Okay. Uh, so we're now we're on the red snapper. Right, <laughs> red snapper. Here we go. The one of red snapper is going to be Josh Barton. Okay, Josh Barton, and I, I assume from Panama City. And I want to make sure I got it because uh, Ron Mills got a nice book. I was going to show it. I don't know. I don't know if I have it on here or not. But uh, let's see. I don't guess. I'll show it the next week, Ron. Okay, let's take a break. We'll come back with a famous Friday fishing report. Okay, welcome back to Famous Friday Fishing Forecast. We got an email this week from one of our viewers of Mariana, and they're trying to learn how to do some uh, saltwater fishing. He's going to bring his 12 year old son down this weekend and wanted some advice where to go and all. I told him to be sure and watch the report. And basically, uh, he, and he's got a nice 17 foot skiff, and that's the same size I have. And that's an ideal boat for me to get around the base system. So, and what I was telling him, you want to find these feeder creeks, and very important if you're going to start fishing the area. Look at it, you know, look on Google Earth and see where the feeder creeks are. The creeks that feed into the to the uh, bay system. And I will start over on the western end over here, over here in Choctahatchee Bay. Uh, you have Alaqua over there, close to Freeport, and uh, that, that is a good one right there. So, uh, let's see. Uh, I don't know what the message is right there. Okay. Anyway, so, so now here, in, we're talking about the area here in, uh, here in West Bay, I, I always mention Burnt Mill Creek, okay, and Crooked Creek. And they're, first of all, there's two nice boat ramps in there. And of course, you get over there to Choctahatchee, uh, you have all those, that area right there, which is a huge area, and uh, Black Creek and all those. But let's get over to West Bay, because he's going to be closer to West Bay. And what I recommend, that uh, there's a boat ramp right up here at Burnt Mill, at uh, the Crooked Creek, okay, up there at Crooked Creek, and come on out of Crooked Creek, out by river camps and all, and this bayou. I've got some nice redfish right here in the middle. This area right in here, okay? They got, that's a good fishing area. And then what I would, a lot of times my game plan, I would actually just troll a little bit with a trolling motor, and I'd actually troll between these two areas here, and a lot of times you can find them concentrated in spots. And then this is Burnt Mill Creek, and the boat ramp again, Burnt Mill Creek boat ramp is right in here. And now uh, it's, you know, it's pretty, you guys sort of got to watch your way out and get on out in here. And then you got to make sure you stay in the channel. Okay, there's some new oyster bars all out in here. There's an oyster farm, a good place to catch them, some trout and redfish. Okay, so <clears throat> learn those feeder creeks. There's been some nice drum call. Uh, okay, now if it, uh, let's go on over. I want to go over to, I want to make sure you know about Sandy Creek, okay? Uh, Sandy Creek, one of the best places, and if you're coming from Mariana or Jackson County or Calhoun County or wherever, if you can get over there into Sandy Creek, and I'll keep everything sort of center of the screen, and the boat ramp right up here in, Sand, right here in Sandy Creek, you put your boat in right here, and just work your way down Sandy Creek. It's a good area, and work all the way on down, out in here. Again, as you come in here, you've got a good channel. Again, same, same principle, you control out through here, and find the trout. But a lot of times in really cold weather, they're gonna come right up into the creek. So I really want to, today, I really want to emphasize these feeder creeks. You heard on the phone call a while ago from Carabelle, you know, the folks, those guys down there, they're going up in the Carabelle River and, and they're, you know, that's where they'll find, that's find redfish and trout right at the mouth of the river. And again, uh, the same way, same way in all these feeder creeks. Uh, St. Joe Bay is one of the few bays that does not have the feeder creek. So you can, uh, you can fish around the, the island and all, but you know, you got this incoming tide and outgoing tide and outgoing tide uh, usually is affected by the north wind, so not a lot of movement there. 
and we'll talk about St. Joe Bay a lot. I want to get on down here to, uh, to Apalachicola Bay because you know, to me that, that is probably some of the finest fishing that you'll, you'll ever do about, around the Apalachicola Bay system. And, and these, you got all these creeks in here. This is where Bill and Bill and I go a lot. But I want to get on down to Carabelle. And don't forget bridge fishing. But now the weather tomorrow is going to be good. Tomorrow morning it looks like the, that rain's going to hold off until maybe tomorrow afternoon. So you, tomorrow morning you're going to get a chance to do some good fishing. But what, uh, what we're talking about down here in Carabelle, get into, and what she was talking about, what Captain Kim was talking about, you know, their place is uh, right here, okay? So you can fish all through here and then go up in the river and fresh water fish. So that's the beauty of these feeder creeks. You can catch all kind of all kind of fish in there. And you heard what they're using for bait and all. This time of year, the old mirror lure is hard to beat. But we heard Matt Smith on the show with Bill Tuesday. Matt and all these guys, Captain Matt Smith, all these guys now, they're paid to produce fish. So what do they go to? They go to live bait. And you can't blame them because live bait, if you like to fish live bait, uh, this is a great time of year to do it. Get that fresh shrimp and put it on a cork, and uh, you can hook it all different ways. Next week, we'll go over different ways you can hook it. But one of the best things, if you just got a kid with you or something, have a, just a certain amount of time, live shrimp is the best way to go. And every little community has some kind of bait shop. I know North Bay, uh, a little, a little place there, Howell Tackle's got them, a Blue Water Outrigger's got a live bait. Uh, down in Apalachicola, a little place, I can't think of the name of it, but there's no bait shop down there. And Carabell always got uh, live bait. So anyway, if you really want to catch fish, uh, try to learn to fish with some live bait, especially in the wintertime. Okay, we're gonna start wrapping things up. I, di I didn't mention uh, fishing, bridge fishing is still gonna be good. Those drum are still biting. We now, right now, is when the sheep are starting to bite. They're, they're becoming spawn, they become the area to start spawning. They're around the rocks uh, at the jetties. Just, you know, limit yourself on how many you're gonna keep uh, and, and uh, just be careful and give your buddy some room. Don't get right up on next to them on your boat. So the sheephead, February is sheephead month and it's going on into March. So it's starting right now on the sheephead, all right? Got to wrap it up as always. Thank you so much for, for watching our show. We appreciate the viewership and enjoy doing the show for you. So you have a great weekend. Enjoy the outdoors and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.